Welcome back to another market update. So, what has happened over the last couple of weeks? Well, let's start with the rising wedge that we talked about in our last video. It wasn't surprising at all that Bitcoin would create this type of formation because, believe it or not, these types of fakeouts are extremely common and almost expected for both rising and falling wedges, at least when it comes to Bitcoin. Thus, it is logical to always expect a smaller move in the direction opposite to the actual breakout, or breakdown move. Let me show you an example. And well, what do you know? I'm talking about the 2020 COVID crash again. We had a very similar rising wedge over here, and the move even had a smaller and a larger fakeout before falling back down into the wedge. Then the price found support on the bottom of the wedge before breaking down, having a bearish retest, and then finally breaking down for good. Pretty textbook if you ask me. Now, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, so let me give you the good news as well. First of all, we aren't even close to breaking down from the wedge yet, considering how wide this one is. As a matter of fact, we're still hovering around toward the top of the wedge, and challenging the upper resistance area. As of right now, Bitcoin has found support on top of these previous tops. Therefore, nothing is for certain right now and the bears need a lot more follow through. The real confirmation would be breaking down from this 59k area or so, and even better, having a bearish retest after that. Therefore, the bears are the ones who need to do the proving right now. However, there is also an area where the bulls need to do the proving. I'm talking about the descending resistance line that is about to intersect with the rising wedge. A smaller bearish rising wedge inside a larger bullish descending broadening wedge. Which one will reign supreme? Well, there's a way for both of them to have the more probable textbook outcomes. If the rising wedge breaks down first and Bitcoin ends up retesting the bottom broadening wedge support line one more time, then that would be the perfect point for Bitcoin to resume its bull run. However, remember, this is all just speculation and we're not even close to confirming this yet. Let's check in on our other power law indicators now. Starting with the log lock graph. I don't know if it's just me being a conspiracy nut, but the similarities between this and the 2019 to 2020 mini bubble are ridiculous. We are even building the same rising wedge on top of the blue power law trend deviation line. However, remember that lesson from the last video. Any familiar pattern can drastically change on a dime, especially if too many people are looking at the same thing. So the bulls just need to do a 180 and have a sustained rally over here instead of a failed bounce. What makes a good trader is the ability to properly deal with the unexpected outcome when certain predefined parameters are met. Now to the Bitcoin power lock clock. Tick tock, the time is running out. It is 8.25, so only 35 minutes or around two months left until the projected beginning of the mania phase. Any decisive move before that would have to be fast and aggressive. Therefore, time is on the bull side unless the bears want to pull a fast one very soon. Now to the detrended oscillator relative to trends. We went from yellow back into muddy territory after the recent failed breakout. Are we going to touch green in this correction like many times before? Only time will tell. Light green begins at minus 30% deviation or so while the steepest drops end at minus 60%. We're currently at minus 16%, but bear in mind that we're not guaranteed to touch green in bull markets. The only drops that have a 100% success rate of reaching green so far are the bear market bottoms following the tops. However, the COVID crash had an even larger deviation from the trend than the actual bottom, according to this indicator. Now, when it comes to the local Hearst exponent, you can clearly see the beginning of a bottoming process, which is a bullish signal. Is this the first in a series of confirmations, or just a fluke? Let's see. Now let's get back to our wedge patterns. When we were here, many YouTubers were shouting how we have already broken out and why you need to FOMO in before it's too late. This leads us to the topic of today. 
How do we even determine support and resistance lines? Now, to get the most objective line possible, you can use the tops and bottoms of either candle body closes or wicks. Sometimes you will even have wicks and closes lining up with each other in certain touch points. Using closes or wicks are both completely valid methods. However, I do prefer using wicks in most cases when possible, because it shows the full extent of the actual price action. An example of when this is not possible is when the wicks are chaotic, while the closes produce a clear line. An example of this would be the rising wedge from 2020, that I was showing you before. Now, what I do not like is when people draw a random line through wicks and closes to fit their personal bias. Any trend line produced like that becomes extremely subjective. Therefore, when drawing a trend line, choose either the wicks or closes and stick to that line. When it comes to the current formation, I've seen absolutely no indication of breaking out as of right now. Now, depending on how you draw your support and resistance lines over here, you could also have a line indicating that we have broken out. However, even breaking out is not the end-all be-all. We still need confirmation by having a bullish retest and follow through. In 2020, we did have a breakout but the retest failed, so we ended up retesting the bottom of the wedge one more time. As always, bear in mind that our power line indicators always take precedence over classical TA using structures such as support lines and wedges. Having TA knowledge helps us make sense and provide local context to what our power line indicators are showing us in the big picture. If you would like to support our work, consider subscribing to our powerful Lux Algo indicators or show off your knowledge of Bitcoin's true behavior by visiting our merch store. Our Telegram group is also free to join, so make sure to check the links in a pinned comment below. This is Saverio speaking, and as always, thanks for watching.